Hello everyone and welcome back. This here is a 2003 Ford Ranger XLT. It was previously owned by my mom and she had upgraded probably over a year now um, to a, she had bought a F-150 and this has been her backup and she found that she wasn't using it as much as she'd like so we worked out a deal and now it is ours. I have a sweet spot for these Rangers. They are pretty capable in uh, getting places, off-roading type stuff. And this is going to be a perfect vehicle just for that. Getting off the beaten trail, doing some ice fishing, stuff like that. Uh, we'll go over it. I plan on uh, cleaning it and stuff and bringing you along for that. But uh, just kind of do a quick overview. Definitely has a little bit of rust. You guys know we live in Minnesota, so that's not super uncommon. But it runs very nice. And it has 207,000 miles on it. Take a peek inside. Rubber floors, which are my favorite. My F-150 I had had rubber floors. It makes it very easy to clean all the slush off. And yeah, 207, 256. But just a solid little work truck. I would like to get like a cap topper for it. I think it would help with uh, hanging on to some of the gear. And uh, rust-wise, the driver's side is always the worst because they sling all the salt into the center and it always hits the driver's door. Gotta unlock this side. But real simple, four-wheel drive works great. Runs nice, goes through all the gears. It has the four liter engine, automatic trans, which I prefer the automatic. Some people like the manuals. I don't like to deal with it. But uh, it's going to be a good truck for us. So what I want to work on this evening is just pop the hood, check all the fluids, see how they're doing, and then I want to uh, do a little bit of cleaning to the seats. I got some spray and some brushes and stuff that I used on my other vehicles and uh, just kind of steam clean these seats off. Typically they would have uh, jump seats in the back, but this model, it just has this little cubby that folds down, but it's nice to have that extended cab because you can put all sorts of gear back there and uh, it's safe in the cab. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get to that. Overhead cam. I know it's out of windshield washer fluid because I tried to I tried to hit that and it wouldn't go. Uh, so let's take care of that first. Oh, I have a little bit left in this jug, so I'll go get more. Battery is from 2020, so that's good. And it's probably due for an oil change. Let me check the sticker here and see what the oil says. Ugh. I can't read that sticker, but it's probably due for an oil change. Certainly that oil looks uh, pretty old. But, Otherwise, everything is uh, looks all right. Looks good. Okay. Okay. So what I have here is a box of some detailing stuff. So 
this here has these here brushes, which are really nice for uh, scrubbing at the fabric. Got all sorts of stuff in here, apparently. And this is buffing pads for the outside. I got some clay bars and stuff, but what I really want are these here. So I'll show you how I'm going to use these in just one minute. So the other stuff that I have to go along with this is this chemical guys. I seen a long time ago that this is like the stuff to have. So you mix a little bit of this in with some water. You already have a little bit left from the last vehicle I did. And you spray it on the seat. And then I have one of those Bissell steam cleaners. And I'll just, um, I'll probably spray some of this on there, put a bunch of water on it from the steam cleaner. The good thing about these types of uh, scrubbers is you can use it with a uh, quick connect system, which is pretty nice. And, and I'll just scrub the seats. Like I said, it has rubber floors, so that's a lot easier for that. But mainly I just want to get the seats cleaned off, wipe everything down, and uh, it should be pretty good to go from there. This truck is uh, pretty clean. Just kind of doing this to get it done with. I like to do this, I guess, on most of the vehicles I buy. Okay, we got the floor cleaned in the front and the seats but I wanted to check out the two pockets back here this is normally where the jump seats would be Ooh, flashlight Let's see what's on the other side and on this side Ooh, some string nice this string here I probably used uh, what year would that have been? 2013 when I moved off to college I used this truck and hauled my stuff up so that string might have been from me a long time ago okay all the stuff inside is drying and we are going to address this hitch I don't know if this is frozen in or not probably is and I don't know if the lights work, we definitely are going to need this, so I'm going to try to pound this out with a hammer quick. One thing my mom said is it's getting soft in the corner here. Oh yeah. Yeah, we might have to put a piece of plywood in here. The other one that I looked at was all rotten out on this side. there huh. okay well, yeah we'll, we'll uh, have to shove a piece of plywood in here that'll be good enough it's not not that big of a deal the box itself isn't loose or anything yet so at least that's okay this here is a brake light checker for the trailer plug we'll plug it in and check to see if we have any uh, issues with the wiring harness There we go. So I just used WD-40, sprayed some in there, there's a little bit of corrosion and I wiggled these around, but WD-40 
displaces moisture and uh, you can use it for electronics and it's good. So I'm gonna wiggle it around some more, but that's fixed. Okay. Okay, we got our, uh, we got our hitch out. And I use, I'm using the torch, I heat it up in here just to get the moisture out. And to descale it, which is the issue, all that rust is just kind of sitting in there. I'm just using this sawzall, and the end of it will just poke around to kind of scale off any of that rust. The first half is good, it's just the last half because my uh, screwdrivers and stuff, I can't get the right angle. So this should probably pick at it pretty good. Okay, we're out here watching the uh, newest video. I wanted to just go through everything again. Went through it real brief yesterday. But I knew that it hadn't been driven in a while, so I just wanted to check the air box. And luckily I did, because at some point, something has been in here. <laughs> Stored a bunch of cat food. So I'm gonna suck that out with the vacuum, and that will be good. The filter itself, probably could use a replacement. It's not, uh, I wouldn't say it's terrible, but it definitely probably should be replaced. So we'll track down one of those. And I did pull back the liner here on the bed, and you can see just more of the extent of the rust. This side isn't so bad. It's mainly right there. There's nothing closer to the tailgate. So what I plan on doing is taking some of that roofing material that I used on the deer stand and slapping a sheet of it on there and then just covering it up with the bed liner and that'll be more than enough for what I need it for. I might put a couple self tappers in there or something just to hold it in place. But that is currently at the storage unit and I don't have it here. So we will have to uh, swing by there tomorrow. I think I'll be in the area and I'll grab a sheet a sheet of it. I just want something on that side because that's a big enough hole where something could fly out of it <laughs> and that's um, what I want to avoid. So I might grab two just to see if I can put something over here but mainly concerned about that side. And then underneath here, there's this it's probably sound deadening type fabric. And uh, see that? And it just so happens that it goes right to here. And that's, that has to be maybe sound deadening stuff, but I'm pretty sure that's absorbed a lot of moisture and then rotted it out. And yeah, there's more, there's more of it right here too. So that's exactly it. If you have one of these rangers, I'd say go underneath there and try to get rid of this because that's uh, that's no good. All right, so we should just be able to shove this in with this little hook going down, and uh, yeah. This end piece goes on and twists. Um, but story time on this, Dad and I, this was many years ago, like 2009, 2009 2010 maybe. We, um, I was on my summer vacay and we were going to North Dakota to work. I think this is working. And we got a flat tire, a blowout actually on the side of a major freeway. It was scary. Yeah, it is working. And uh, we tried to do this, and we pulled like way off into the ditch. It was a full on blowout. It was like scary. And uh, and the, the issue was it was all rusted, which is really not that uncommon. I mean, if you keep good tires on your vehicle, you never have to do this. It was just that one weird scenario. Well, we couldn't get the tire off, so or we couldn't get the spare down. So I ended up having to drive on the side of this freeway for a few miles to get to an exit. 
that uh, that uh, gave us enough space to sit there and fiddle with it. That was quite the ordeal. But anyways, it's those little experiences a person learns from that makes you do it really differently next time. There we go. Yeah, we need some air in this for sure. Rusty. Okay everyone, so the last thing I want to do this evening is just rotate the tires. Um, and I'll kind of talk more about that in a minute, but today when I was sitting, I had Rose in the driver's seat here in the garage. Just She loves to sit in vehicles and goof off. And, uh, and I was sitting in the passenger seat hanging out with her and I went through the glove box. And there's a couple things here I want to show you. So these tires, they're they look really nice and meaty and uh, these tires were put on at 192.9 it has uh, 207 so that's what that, about 15,000 miles on these tires and the price of them I believe was about 450 maybe yeah 4 490 so that's good. I know that these tires, they were put on in 2019. So that it's uh, these tires are two years old and they've only had 15,000 miles. So she really hasn't been driving this very much. I think that was probably around the time when she got her new pickup. And now for the second piece of paperwork. The second piece of paperwork was actually some work that was done this year in February. Um, it got a new thermostat housing, sensor, the plastic water outlet uh, thermostat assembly and that there was 460 bucks so <laughs> at least I won't have to worry about that thermostat uh, for a little while because it, it knock on wood but it seems like the older a vehicle gets the the biggest issue I've noticed is it's always something to do with the plastic thermostat housing that'll leak water or the thermostat gets sticky and it's not really a huge deal to, to fix that, but it's one of those things where when you're going down the road, you want that peace of mind. So that's pretty cool to find that uh, that was fixed. And like I said, my mom owned this truck before me, and uh, maintenance-wise, she's not one to go around with the check engine light on. She takes care of that stuff immediately. So um, I think that it has been in relatively good hands, despite the rusty body um, she does commute on some pretty big freeways they probably salt the heck out of them but uh, despite that I think mechanically it's been very well taken care of Okay, we get that brake off this top pin. Slides beautiful. No resistance or, you know, the normal amount of resistance. The bottom pin, though, it moves. A little wiggle, but no slide. So that's why I'm in here. Just a real good time to make sure that uh, that stuff is good. I'll hit that with a mall, uh, rubber mallet, and then I have some special brake style grease. I'll yank the boot off and grease it real quick and we will be good to go, but this one's being slightly stubborn, so we're just gonna apply a little bit of heat here. And actually, a couple ways a person can do this, you can heat it up like this, and the outer, outer case here expands and gives you a little more room, but if you get it hot enough, you can spray like WD-40 into the front end of it, and it actually draws that WD-40 in. In go, see that? Comes right out. So, you know, it just gets a little sticky in there, the grease gets old. I got some special old grease I'll put on here and ram it back in and we'll be good to go. Get that on there.
what we are going to go with. Let's take a peek at the pins on this side. Top one moves, bottom one sticky. Yep, bottom one sticky. Okay, so this one's done. We gotta make a little list. Needs the sway bar end link. Pins are good. Now we just gotta pop the rear up and get that tire off, flip them around, and this is done. Okay everyone, so we went through the vehicle, we uh, did, did our first check, our first maintenance on it if you will. Uh, I'm going to be getting four new shocks for it and then the passenger side sway bar end link. Definitely needs that. I think some of the cupping on the front tires is caused by those shock absorbers. I have no idea of knowing when it was, when those were changed, if they have ever been changed. So. Um, I do order all my parts from Rock Auto, and they normally have three tiers, economy, your regular tier, and then a premium tier, and I think I'm just going to rock economy on this machine. Um, not that it's not that it's not worth better parts, but I have my daily driver car, my wife has her daily van, and, uh, and I have a hefty commute to work every day, and I don't feel like getting terrible. I probably get twice as much gas mileage than this thing can bring me with my car. So unless it's really snowy or I have something to haul that day, this will be hanging out here at home. Um, the truck will be used for uh, fishing, hunting, you know, maybe going to the lumber yard, stuff like stuff of that nature. And um, for all the other trips we can take, you know, the, the other vehicles per se. Um, Another reason why we got this, my mom decided to sell it and uh, she gave me a really good deal on it. And the primary purpose of it is I, you know, I, I have a, my full-time job, as you guys know, I'm a, a lot of people ask what I do. I weld for a living. Um, and and so I, I put in my time there and I have wanted to get out of it I'm not heavily educated. I got my degree in welding, and uh, or I went to college for welding, I should say, and and that was it. You know, I got my job. I've been working ever since, and so I don't have any door opening degrees that's that's going to help me switch that. And I really would like to work for myself. So uh, this working for myself has always been on the back burner, and I'm I'm hoping that pickup here can help open some doors just in the utility purpose of, um, of, of coming up with ideas and trying them. Um, there's a lot of things I can do out of my car and there's a lot of things we can do out of the van for, for making money but um, I'm hoping that this is a more dedicated vehicle where I can set it up that way and, and it's always ready to go. So that's the goal. We'll see where things go. It all takes time, but um, you guys have seen it. Now you know what we're going to be rocking. Uh, I hope next week to get out and do my winter camp. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be that's going to be cold. <laughs> that's going to be quite the trip. But uh, I had to go through and get this initial stuff out of the way so that I had enough uh, belief in it that it would uh, that it would get me to where I want to be. So really all I got. So thanks a lot for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.